Integrating storytelling in your marketing strategy can help boost your brand's relevance and authenticity. It can help your audience or customers relate to your brand and understand why they would want to be associated with you. But guess what? Storytelling can help increase your business sales too. In this episode, Robert Cristobal joins me and share his insights on how applying storytelling in your content can help increase your sales. Robert is the founder and content strategist of Frame 316, a digital content production company for branding, marketing, and training. You can know more about him and what he does on his website, frame316.com. Okay, let's jump in and listen to the conversation. What's up, everyone? This is Ray Baggio, and you're listening to Digitally Matters a podcast for anything digital that really matters to you and your business. Let's start the show. Actually, I haven't met him in person because, for one, he's living in Singapore for, I think, 15 or 17 years now. Um, And my guest is Robert Cristobal. Robert is a content strategist and storyteller. Robert is also the founder of Frame 316. It's a digital content production company for branding and marketing and training. And I believe Frame 316 specializes in content creation and distribution for omnichannel marketing to amplify brand value and delivery for, for the clients. And tell us more about yourself, Robert. Hello. And... Um... Welcome sa, ano, sa mga nanonood and I'm glad to be invited by Ray, one of the active movers sa uh, industry ng digital content and marketing dyan sa Philippines. So about me, uh, I don't know, not much, except that uh, my passion for learning and teaching is, prob- is probably the, the main reasons why I am where I am today, and it just translated somehow to serving people first, and then you know serving other people who have money to pay me while I serve them. But it's it's just about the passion to to grow because for me I started when I was in college. I started as a graphic. I am a computer engineering by profession, graduate, but when I was in college, I realized I don't want to do that, but I need to finish college. So mm-hmm. what I did when I was in college was teach myself Photoshop, uh, HTML, uh, what else, Premiere Pro. During that time, I know, wala pa masyadong internet nun, so books pag ginagamit namin. Mm-hmm. And of course, sa Philippines, sobrang accessible na mga installer. So yeah, that's where I started. And then, yeah, I began to grow my network somehow. Then I moved to Singapore. Then it's easy kasi infrastructure to, to set up a company. So I set up my own company here uh, 12 years ago. Yeah. I see. So I, yeah. you're, you've been in Singapore for a lot of years now, Robert, right? So yes. is, the, is the move to relocate from the Philippines to Singapore is more business related or is it like a personal if there's a personal purpose or reason behind it it's it's more of a a combination of chance and you know exploring because i got tired uh when i was in the philippines i found it really challenging no sa yung speed ng internet the uh-huh. access to uh, infrastructure and then i got the chance to visit and like <laughs> like many filipinos in singapore na nakapag visit and you know eventually nakahanap ng work kasi during that time ano pa medyo madali pa makahanap ng work dito pero i only work a few months because <clears throat> i i applied for a permanent residency that's when i was able to uh, you know, set up the company pero it's more of a combination of you know, I want to be out of the Philippines and try something somewhere else. And yeah, my opportunity, so I grabbed it. Oh, other than the fact that our, our internet here in the Philippines, or internet connection here in the Philippines, really suck in, in terms of, or compared to Singapore's, because I know it's, re- it's really fast. And 
also the you mentioned business registration and the business processes there um, is really uh, faster than than how we do it here in the Philippines, right? Aside from these, yes. compared to in, when it comes to delivering or in terms of attracting clients or um, delivering your services to clients, what uh, differences can you can you share with with us in terms of the type, the type of clients you're handling there in, in Singapore compared to here? Okay, when it comes to clients, of course, when you are in, in a foreign land, although ako yung, sorry, I mean, nagko-construction yata sa task. Although ako yung foreign na dito, for me, this is, you know, my foreign land. Okay. It's really challenging. Unang una, I, of course, I, I'm not from here. And the first challenge that you would have is, why would they choose me, you know, as a provider when there's a lot of them here in, in Singapore? Pero, ang kita kong ano, the advantage, most clients are really, um, what they call this, output, nakafocus sila sa, sa, sa output. And, you know, they would decide based on the merit of, are you able to do this? And have you worked with uh, big brands before? And are you really able to deliver what, what we're looking for? That's how clients in Singapore think. So, yeah, when I was starting, my first few clients were, were really, you know, challenging. But when I first got my, um, my my first big project in Singapore was with a bank. And that's, you know, that's when it started. So I, I really used that opportunity. Uh, medyo um, matagal yung process ng project. Pero once I got the bank and I was able to close uh, APEC, uh, Brussels based uh, transport parang agency ng government nila and yeah, yung, yung SMRT rito. So yeah. Pero sa Pilipinas, baka kasi when I, when I left the Philippines, wala pa social media na eh. So that time talagang word of mouth, you know, I was invited to speak, to teach, and connections lang talaga. Pero yung, yung the way we pitch business right now, back in the days, sobrang ano, word of mouth, tatawagan mo, maikipagkaibig, matagal kasi walang social media. Pero in terms of clients, uh, hindi naman sila nagkakaiba. Masasabi ko lang dito, mas focus sila sa output. Sa Pilipinas kasi, pag kakilala ka, you know, kahit hindi, hindi mo kaya i-deliver, you know, they would get you. Parang ganun. Oh, okay. So, it, it was really like a challenge, especially in your first client mo, di ba? So, I might to... Yep, it was. Okay. I see. Um, in terms of um, attracting or choosing clients, do you do, you do that? I mean, do you choose the clients you work for or work with or do you have a certain like some 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 can say they would prefer to to niche down or niche down they just um accommodate or cater to certain clients type of clients let's say kung sa construction industry lang sila construction industry clients mm-hmm. lang or, or banking in, in your case you started with uh, your first client was uh, with uh, was a bank so did you up to go that route na bank na lang talaga since uh, you can deliver these things for for this for this uh, brand or are you also offering your services to other types of businesses so when i was starting that's a good question when i was when i started uh, it was a bit of a scattered approach kasi you know you just start to learn the strategy you learn the market Mm-hmm. And, you know, you don't have the luxury to choose now. Oh, I'm just going to choose, let's say, insurance, you know, insurance uh, space. Yes. When you don't have connection in insurance space. By that time, I have a few connections here and here and here, different industries. So as I started to build uh, the, the business in, in Singapore, wala talagang ano pa nun, walang niche. I don't even know how to package it kasi nga parang I'm a multidisciplined uh creator. So I started web design, graphics, then I moved to photography, video. So right now, as a content strategy ako and more on the consulting area. Mm-hmm. Uh, dahil nandun yung ano eh, para nandun yung client facing na madil- madali. If you're able to prove to them na, hey, this is what you need, you know, and this is why you need that. And then they agree, then I would produce what they need. Parang ganun. Pero it was only recently when I just really niche down. Kasi importante yun. Kasi nga, lumaki yung market, di ba? Lumaki yung internet. Lumaki yung may access sa, uh, dumami yung websites. So, if you still have the same strategy, mahirap. So, right now, uh, 
ang naging niche ko for the past uh, few years. Nag-focus ako sa mga ano, ang mga clients ko major na agency. Kasi nakita ko for na discover ko in Singapore agencies they charge so many ano uh, parang uh, very pricey sa clients nila. Mm-hmm. And they don't have most the agent mid-level agencies they don't have in-house creatives like me. So they would look for me, you know, and and deliver the the project to the client pero parang white label yeah pero when when i did that last year you no know, but three mga three years ago nag start ako and then last year i shifted to another niche which is the target ko yung mga SMEs or dito sa Singapore small medium enterprise meron din tayo sa Pinas target ko sila so my parang my value proposition is hey you guys you don't have you know access to mid-level and big agencies, yeah. you know, I work with them, I'm here, I can deliver that to you at the price ng SME. So, it's giving SME access. Para yung gumawa ng Nike, di ba? Walang, ka, hindi kaya na SME yun eh. Pero since I have access to projects like that before, not Nike, pero that big. So, I offered that to SME. So, in a year, yun na yun naging eh, ano ko, uh, niche ko right now. Then that's when I started to build the YouTube to support that because I want to help SMEs. Yes, yes. Actually, I've been, I've been following your, your content. And I'm also curious because you mentioned in our one of our conversations uh, before, actually recently, you mentioned that you don't have your own like a uh, uh, full-time team. You also outs- yep. you also get in touch with with your uh, with reliable people who you've worked with before, right? Uh, to to mm-hmm. Uh, the, the services now how do you d- come up with these content what's your content process or content creation process looks like L- just you don't have to to give us the details but just a, a, uh, an idea how it looks like for you in the content creation process you know uh, if, uh, if, if, if you're gonna do it the way I'm doing it you know you to add value to a specific group of people and with a niche kasi ako content creation talaga and YouTube yung niche ko uh, the process the process that I would do is um, it's like uh, two ways you know I have a list of evergreen content and uh, I think you're familiar with evergreen content where you know any time of the year, when they watch, when people watch it, they would learn from it. Like you know, how to edit on your smartphone, like my recent episode. You don't need to wait until Christmas for you to buy that. So I have like a library of those topics. Because knowing what the small, the SMEs need, I was able to formulate, you know, what topics would help these people. And then, you know, I write a script. You know, when I started in YouTube, I was not writing a script, and it's that was really hard because they, you get a lot of takes, magstumble ka. So yeah, right now I have a script and I have a teleprompter. So the other process is, you know, I I I have like two hours a week or every three to four days just reading stuff. Ano yung bago sa radar? Like my two previous uh, episodes in the with Microsoft Teams na together mode panlaban sa Zoom, and then. Uh, a couple of days ago, I did a video on the new metric by YouTube. I just read about that. Mm-hmm. And what I did, because new, new, ano yun, eh, new topic. Eh. So what I did, I read a lot of articles. You know, once I saw na, oh, this is a new topic. I read a lot of articles, take note. And you, you would notice, you know, once there's something new, mm-hmm. and you search it on Google, you would notice, halos pare para yung pagkakasulat. <laughs> Kasi nga, dahil that's a new topic, no one knows anything about it. So people just get creative. Let's say uh, YouTube released that in their support page. Uh-huh. And when I I read all the articles that came out, it's just, you know, like uh, paraphrasing what YouTube said because no one knows how, how that works yet. So I do the same thing for new topics, like fresh topics. I would read articles, take note, you know, how I can deliver this, not with the same exact words, but in the same manner. And I get like, snippet screenshot so two ways yung content creation so new topics come up with new topics so uh, when a new topic comes i don't have to wait <laughs> i will film that immediately but yung evergreen content ko it's a scheduled thing so i have like um a day in a week just to film one evergreen content it's 
So if I'm lucky and enough, enough time, maybe two or three videos I can film. So that that that's the two approach new and evergreen fresh content and evergreen content to like uh when what what i do myself is i i go to aura and then i see mm-hmm. which which content or which questions are are getting a lot or less um answers and then if that's something that um i'm passionate about or i know something about then i answer it and then i create content uh, if is that the same? Is that the same process with you? Yeah, but Cora is for me. Cora is a bit too crowded. Uh, it takes time to really go through that. Although, meron na kong mga channels. Channels ba tawag don sa Cora? Parang specific topic na gusto mo lagi I have that in Cora. Uh-huh. Pero uh, if you know the set of people you're really targeting, you would probably have an idea immediately, like the first mm-hmm. twenty problems that they have eh? so you start you start from there and, and the, the, the challenge the challenge with Cora is ang hirap ding i-filter kasi and may mga trolls din sa Cora eh. so like for me because YouTube itself you know the, the the YouTube studio the back end of YouTube you're, you're able to know what people are looking for you know just by going at the back end of YouTube not going to Cora or Twitter you would know that uh people are looking for this people are asking this in youtube mismo they would push you na uh, ipapakita sa feed mo kasi youtube would know youtube read signals eh. so oh. youtube knows who's serious or not eh. so like me i'm like a serious content creator so content gets pushed to me on the home page based on what i do kaya mahirap din na mag-vlog ka ng alaming kalat-kalat yung kung ano na lang maiisip ng topic lagay ko sa vlog ko eh. Kasi malilito si YouTube eh. So the, the, the idea is you help YouTube know what you're doing specifically. And YouTube would help you bring your content in front of the audience. Kasi merong ano, 2 billion hours a month ang, ang kinoconsume sa YouTube. Eh. So YouTube somehow already knows who's watching what. And YouTube tells it to the creator. No need. Cora is like a sport thing. For mm. me, I use Cora after releasing after releasing a video. Uh, then I go to Hora, <laughs> and uh, I use that video as an answer. Oh, okay, okay. So then it, it gives it gives me it gives me traffic, parang ganon. Yeah, actually, it's it's actually a good a good strategy too. Um, so you're doing um a reverse. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, okay. That's that's interesting. I might try. Chaka part ng yung YouTube reads the signals eh. Because uh, I I did the I I started nagen pala ko. So YouTube re- reads the signals. So let's say you uh, uploaded a video, right? So, YouTube would read what happens to that video. So, immediately, if you're doing YouTube talaga, meron parang normal routine. When you upload YouTube, share it to all your channel. You don't share it to the channels like Twitter, uh, Pinterest, Facebook, uh, Cora, or what else. Uh, you don't show it with the purpose of people to read that, per se. Mm-hmm. Kasi, of course, sa Facebook, you're familiar. Ang hirap na traffic sa Facebook, di ba? Even if you have 3,000 people na friends mo, sobrang konti lang yung exposure talaga ng pinopost mo. And Facebook even admits that. Eh. So, mm-hmm. what YouTube does, once you're able to spread that and share that, it gives the signal to YouTube na, oh, this I this creator is helping YouTube get more in you know, audience by sharing it. And what YouTube does, parang nang ang nangyayari pinupush ni YouTube yung content mo sa top so that's that's how YouTube work okay. kaya if if your motivation if if you're a content creator you posted a video on YouTube then you share that on Facebook and then no likes no share those are vanity metrics eh. mm-hmm. makaka discourage talaga yun. if you notice ang onti lang mga likes and shares ko sa Facebook but yeah. I don't read that you know once you go at the back end of YouTube like, like right now naka-open yung analytics ko may kita mo like Six months ago na video, there's like five people watching it right now. It's a good thing for me. Oh, okay, okay. At least uh, you'll get more data from it and more results. You can you can actually uh, be strategic in terms of what you need to do next because you have uh, like the data to to follow it up, right? To to support. Yep. Uh, okay, compared to, yep. to to Facebook. Um, 
there's one thing that I'm curious about your your branding. I look at your content and um, uh, your tagline and and whatever you're doing. It's the word storytelling or storyteller would always show up. Why yeah. <laughs> storytelling is crucial for your clients for your, for brands you want to help in terms of you know um, getting results for them? How crucial is it? Uh, it's it's very crucial, you know, because uh, I mean we all do business, different business, right? May mga nasa health, may nasa insurance, may nasa professional services, may orang mga nasa products. But at the end of the day, when when you really study, see, I, I did really, I really did self study. When you study how big companies grew, you know, and how even content creators become really influential, mm-hmm. uh you would see the dynamics in how they connect to their audience. And in and, and that phrase itself, when you say connect to your audience, even if you have the perfect product in this planet, mm-hmm. it's still a product. It's a thing. <laughs> even yeah. if you have a service, it's an experience, right? Yeah. Even if you have a mastery or a skill in anything, that's like, I can see that, but it's not enough to connect to a human being. Like, as long as, the human beings existed. The way that we connect to each other is through stories. You know? That's how you talk to a stranger and then eventually a friend. Mo. Mm. You, know, you started like, oh, taga saan ka, right? Oh, taga rin din ako. You know someone there? Like, you know, alam yun, there's friendships na doon nagsimula, right? When we are in school, you don't know people, you just chat, you ask stories, you tell stories. So I think for me, I, I leverage on that. I use that. Kasi I wanted to bring that component of uh, telling stories, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, if you are in the business of trying to keep your customers, trying to keep your clients, Mm -hmm. if you are in that business, everyone is in that business, right? You should master or at least integrate telling stories. You know, instead of saying, I'm the best for when you're no, I'm the best video editor in Singapore, I'm the best YouTube content creator in Singapore. Like mm-hmm. there's another thousand people who can easily say that in a country that has five million population. But if I stand up and say, like, hey, you know, I'm here, you know, uh, you were you're here because you want to learn how to create YouTube. I wanna I wanna know why why you wanna create YouTube, you know. I wanna I wanna start conversation with you and that's you know where you build the storytelling component like what you're doing you know you want to find out more about the people you interview not just like our company because you can easily go to a website or a LinkedIn profile sure. you would know hmm. but if you dig deeper that's where the story comes in right yeah. if your product is if your product let's say is food you know FMCG uh, why not use stories to talk about how people consume that food so they relate, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's more about making things, services, products, skills, making it relatable using stories. Yeah. I have a follow-up question uh, to, to that, uh, Ro, because it's really interesting. And I agree with you. I can see the, the logic behind why you want to push for storytelling as part of of uh, your services or how you deliver the content or create the content for your clients. But let's say, for example, I'm an SME and I, yes, I do see the value of storytelling for my brand and for my, for Mm -hmm. me reaching out to my audience. But what about my sales? Would it help me um, increase, at least deliver some clients or customers to, to my end if I just do storytelling? with my content okay that's a that's a good question this is uh i mean for me i i have existed in singapore for more than a decade now so somehow i was able to sell <laughs> so probably it works but on a serious note uh on a serious note when it comes to selling uh there's there's a psychology about selling mm. uh like at any given time when someone sells you anything you know, when someone sells you anything, you don't usually buy it immediately. The first 
the first thing that our brain does is you know shuts down the brain shuts down like i don't need that you know why are you selling me that so the behavior the behavior of buying is always when i want to buy and when i'm ready to buy so it does not depend on how good the product is unless you're really rich you know na parang walang basis yung ano mo na pag may bago bili ka agad pero in general people would buy when they want to buy and when they are ready to buy and in between that process you know kung sino yung product or kung sino yung services na talagang sobrang nakarelate sila that that is the product or the service na una nilang may isip eh. Uh, that is the, the kasi for me you know i have I was as a, a true story um uh, an mnc contacted me just because the marketing director saw my video on uh linkedin before mm-hmm. on linkedin di pa ako nagyo youtube noon eh. okay so you know they asked me so, uh can you go to the office blah 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 things like that you know if i'm a traditional business owner magre-reply agad ako Kasi I wanna, I wanna sell eh. You mentioned right selling, right? Yes. If I'm a traditional business owner, I would ask them, you know, what do you want from me? So I can send you some documents to review, you know, parang pitch. Uh-oh. But the MNC client just asked me to go to their office. So that's what I did. So I went to the office mm-hmm. bringing nothing. I don't even know what they what they want. But I did a review on their website. I spent a few minutes to read on the way to their office. Then when I got there, they said, oh, we watch your video on LinkedIn and we noticed that you're doing this and we want to get your, uh, what they call this, we want to get your opinion on something that we want to do. Again, if I am a traditional business owner, that's already this client asking me to do something for them. So I have to charge them, right? Yes. So they're asking for my opinion. Again, because my in my DNA, it's about telling stories, having conversations. So, okay, what's your, what, you know, what do you want to talk about? And eventually, they talk about what they wanted to do, blah, 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 para ganun. And then, I gave them a professional opinion na, like, work five digits if I'm gonna do the, the, it as a consulting service. Okay. And then, eventually, after that, okay, uh, sabi nila, we have $7,000, parang ganun, na to spend, to spare. Okay. We have $7,000 to spare for a two-minute video, sabi nila. And I think you can do this, you know, with how we were talking, with how we talk to you right now. Mm-hmm. So I think you can do this. So, you know, how do, how do we proceed? So nakita mo, andun agad yung conversion. Mm-hmm. Pero that, that's not where the good news um, ends. Sabi ko, okay, how $2,000 and you wanted to a two-minute video. What do you do with the video? Uh, you have seven thousand dollars and you want two minute video. What do you want to do with the video? Ah. And they were caught off guard. They don't wanna. They don't know what they're gonna do with the video. <laughs> Are you gonna upload it so that someone would play that and watch it and you know hope something happens? <laughs> so in that, what I did, you know, I took the opportunity to somehow become to influence. You know how they decide. Kaya okay i pitched something else so i pitched them a strategy i was pitching them a, a strategy na instead of just getting two minute video you know why why don't we do this strategy you know, mm-hmm. same amount of money because that's 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 what you can spend eh? mm-hmm. and after that meeting i did around a hundred videos now for that client because because just because of telling stories Ah. So the selling, the selling, the selling part really would come if 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 you don't think about selling. Eh. That's I mean that's parang yun yung gray area dun, eh. You can sell. Mm-hmm. The thing about selling is it's transactional. Eh. Even if you're able to sell, right? Mm-hmm. How do you keep that client? Nao na natik manya na yung product mo na try na. Now, how do you tell them na oh maganda yung product ko? You don't, <laughs> right? The, what you do is you engage. You, and how do you engage? You tell stories. What's your work routine looks like? All right, I have a I have a work routine, but that I don't follow it strictly. Because there there are a lot of experts who would stay you would say you know, stay to your routine. You know, it's more productive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the productivity always depends on are you still enjoying your life. <laughs> okay. uh, so I have a work routine, but when I feel like not doing it or doing anything else. It, minsan, I'm I'm in in the middle of a project, and I'm stuck. I would go out and watch a movie. 
<laughs> and go back. Okay. Kasi in, in, instead of you know killing myself, kasi I have a dead air. You know, parang nothing's pushing me to do this. You know, even if it's a high-paying project, I want to do something else. So I walk out. It's either I go to a park, I watch a movie, or I eat. You know, at least two hours. I mean, a movie is two hours. There's a few block, a few blocks away from here. Sa bahay may, may theater. But my gen- general routine is after I wake up, I have like a small notebook here in my table. Uh, meron ako ng ano? Meron ako ng to do, chaka to don't. Natutunan ko to don sa ano? Isa libro na binili ko. To do, chaka to don't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, meron tayong to-do list. Meron yun akong to-do. <laughs> yung mga to-do list ko, ibig sabihin nun, pwede ko siyang i-push, hindi siya urgent. Huwag ko muna siyang gagawin. Yeah. Uh-huh. Pwede kong mamaya na or bukas na yun. Pero yung to-do list ko, uh, nandun doon. And then yung to-do list ko na categorize. Yung pinakaayaw kong gawin, parang nakakainis gawin. May ganun eh. Alam mo yun. <laughs> project ka. Kahit binabayaran ka, ano, well, do this, nakakatamad ang haba-haba ng problem. So, inuuna ko yun. It's it's really rewarding kapag first first few hours of the morning na una mo yan. And then he, yung daily routine ko, meron din akong weekly routine. So meron na akong fixed day in a week where I just do reading and writing oh. and consuming content online, no work talaga. Uh, it, I need that kasi my product is content. So that's the fruit of my work. So I have to plant content in myself to myself para you know, I can create content. So I have that one day in the week where I just consume content. I read, watch videos, watch trainings, I write. I think I can relate. <laughs> I can relate and I would love to relate <laughs> to, your, to your routine, man. Because I, I myself, I've been struggling uh, when it comes to productivity. Yes, it, you mentioned some people would say you wake up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. to be productive and then you list down what you need to do, three things mm-hmm. within the day. And sometimes I really feel like there's there are really days when um just don't feel like doing anything or work related. Yep. And just yep. and, and it slows you down. I mean, even if regular if a certain task, work task will just take me, let's say, thirty minutes. But there are days when even for that particular task, it would take let's say two hours because I'm just not feeling like working just don't feel like working that day so and then and i feel guilty every time when i when i do that and then i i look at my to-do list i don't have a to-do to don't list yet <laughs> i consider that and when i look at the list and then i see i was only able to take off one one task during that day even if i, I was able to really enjoy have fun i feel guilty so, sometimes mm-hmm. so I think I need to also, you know, adjust the, the the good thing about having a routine. It needs to work for you, not just because one person says it works for them, right? So you need to like custom. Yes, you, that's the purpose of the routine is not like a rule of thumb. Eh? So may, meron akong sasuggest na book sa'yo, send ko mama yung picture. Uh, binabasa ko lagi, how artists work, daily rituals. So, magugulat ka talaga para sila, paano sila public, Pablo Picasso yung, exactly sa question mo. Oh. Lahat ng great artists naka-describe dito, ang saya niyang basa. Each artist is mga three page lang. Is May it... mo na merong isang, merong isang artist dito na, meron siyang specific na kinakain, no? sa umaga. Pag hindi niya nakain yun, hindi siya makakapag-work. I mean, Yun yun eh. rule, rule, hindi yun rule of thumb eh. the, the end of the day, are you still enjoying what you're doing? Kaya tayo nandito as a freelancer, you know, as, 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 as an owner of our own brand, hmm. is to enjoy. Otherwise, the, we, we just stayed at the 9 to 5 work, right? Kasi yeah. we, can, we cannot enjoy that eh. So we went out. So if we went out, freelancer kami sa lilikang company and then you're not enjoying. Di ba? Balik ka na lang sa 9 to 5. Mas fix pa yung <laughs> I mean, mas fix pa yung sweldo mo. Hindi ka kakabahan na at the end of the month. Walang client na huwag gabay. Kasi, yeah, are you still enjoying that? That's that's what I would ask myself. Okay. And about that book, is it like a PDF uh, file? Or, uh, I don't know. I think I think they have this in Amazon as an e-book. Pero, yeah, kasi I love I love books na hinahawakan ko. Masaya pa rin ako na kaya ang dami kong kaalat sa bahay. Masaya pa rin ako sa papel. <laughs> I see. I- Iba pa rin how I process the info kapag hinahawak ko yung papel libro. 
Can you also share the title of that book um, within this uh, conversation, bro? So okay, ang, ang title niya is Daily Rituals, How yeah. Artists Work. So, uh, compilation siya ni, ang pangalan na nag si Franz Kafka. Parang Frank Zappa eh. May ibang spelling. Franz Kafka. Okay, so, sinulat, sinulat niya to. Ano siya? Makapal. Hardcover. Oh, okay. So, dito, dito lahat ng pwede mong, iba hindi mo kilala. Pero ma- makakarelate siya kasi oh, may artist. Mga artist pa uh, ganito. Ito, oh, tulad nito. I, I just open a page. No? There's this artist, illustrator, in 1949. Wakes up at 6 a.m. na ayos yung kama niya. And then, he reads the obituaries. <laughs> That's how he starts his work. Eh. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, I mean, whatever he gets from that, that's what he does. Obituaries, okay, that's creepy, man. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> creepy. Na buka na buka sa kula. If that works yeah. for him, it's it's yes for him. Yeah, and, yeah for him. Kaya nga ano, talagang dapat unique sa ano, unique sa sa you. What would make you end up enjoying what what you do? And I really enjoyed our conversation. I would want to extend this further, Pasana, but I know where we have a limited time. But hopefully, in the future, we'll have future episodes then with you. Um, yeah, sure, no problem. Thanks uh, then for inviting me. Yeah, L- let me know sa ako to mapapaingan so I can laugh at myself. <laughs> it's one way of me enjoying things. <laughs> for those, for brands, or pe- for people who want to reach out to you. And uh, if they want to know more about your services and what you do or your content, how can they reach you? How can they find you? Okay, so meron akong website, uh, yun nga, yung frame316.com. And mm-hmm. then nakalink naman doon yung YouTube channel ko. And then I write a lot of blogs then. And then you would see what I do. Pero if you're really a YouTube buff, search mo lang yung frame316 media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully you're able to learn things from what I teach. And yep. And help you grow. The, the purpose of the channel is to help uh, small business owners grow their brands through video. That's the specific goal. So that wraps up our show. That's it for now, and thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you'll join me again next time here on Digitally Matters. This has been Ray Baggio, and until next time, ciao!